My name is Mark McEwen. I'm a 9th and 10th grade ENL teacher. This video is for students looking for ways to improve their note taking skills. So in this video, we'll look at three different ways to improve note taking. First, we're going to look at basic symbols and abbreviations you can use when you're taking notes. Then we'll look at how you can organize your ideas when taking notes. And finally, some different ways to practice your note taking skills. So first, let's talk about basic note-taking symbols and abbreviations. These will be important because one of the uh, you have two goals for note-taking. One is to take down information quickly in a fast way. And also, you want to make sure your notes are concise. You want to make sure your notes are short, not too long. So here are some symbols we can use. So we can use a backslash to represent prepositions like in, at, on, or commas. We can use the equal sign to represent is, are, am, that be verb, different forms. We can use an equal sign with a slash through it to represent the negative form of the be, so is not, are not, am not. We can use the plus sign for and, b backslash c for because, an arrow pointing to the side for so causes leads to results in, an arrow pointing up for increases more or most, an arrow pointing down for decreases less, fewer, or least, and this delta or triangle for change, and finally ex with a colon for example. So these are some standard basic symbols and abbreviations we can use. So this is what we're going to start with. So let's look at some examples. So here we have the source material, and on the uh, this side we have notes, that information in note form. So here we have Mariah walked to the store because she needed more milk for her cereal. In note form, it may look like this. Mariah walked to store B slash C because she needed a up arrow here that means more, more milk, backslash, for cereal. See here, dotted lines. Dotted lines are for notes only. Notice this is not a complete sentence. Mariah is capitalized here because it is a name, not because it is the beginning of a sentence, and there's no punctuation at the end. Let's look at another example. A butterfly is an insect. It has six legs and four wings. Here, we have a note for each sentence, so we begin with that little dash. Butterfly equals insect. It has six legs and four wings. However, remember, one of our goals with notes is to be more concise. So while this is fine when you're starting out, as you continue your note taking, you can be more concise. So let's look at an example of that. Butterfly equals insect with six legs and four wings. So you notice here we have our two sentences combined into one note. This is our goal. Finally, we have pollution can cause problems. For example, water pollution can change the pH level in lakes and ponds. And here's our note. Pollution can, so we have that arrow. Here it means leads to results in problems. For example, H2O for water pollution can change, there's our delta, pH level in lakes and ponds. So this is a more advanced example. Now, once you learn those basics, you can go further and look at some more standard abbreviations and symbols we can use. So here are some more examples here. And as you continue and as you master them, maybe eventually you may want to create some of your own non-standard symbols and abbreviations, as we can see here. So next, let's talk about how we can organize our ideas when we're taking notes. So we want to start with that general topic. What is the topic of whatever you're taking notes about? Then we're going to go into main ideas. A text may have one main idea or multiple main ideas, but we're going to read or listen for those. Then we have our supporting details, which are used to support that main idea. And you can see the dotted line here. That is to represent notes, no complete sentences when we see that dotted line. So here we can see an example from a nonfiction article. Now, nonfiction articles make it easy for you because they are usually divided already. So here we have the main title of the article an introduction, and then there are subtitles for each of the other sections. So when you're taking notes, that makes your main ideas easier to identify. So we have our introduction, our, and then our subtitles as our main ideas. And that, that topic up there, phones in school. 
for a nonfiction book, it may look like this. So our topic here is butterflies, but we may need to identify the main ideas ourselves because there are no subtitles. So this page I can see is about the body parts of a butterfly, reproduction, and life cycle. For chapter books, if you're reading a long text, you may want to divide it by the main ideas by chapter. So here we have chapters one, two, three, etc. If you're reading a story, you may want to divide it by the story structure. So exposition, inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. Similarly, if you're watching a play, movie, or TV show, you may want to divide it by the three-act structure. So Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Finally, let's talk about some different ways that you can practice your note-taking. We're going to start with written text, then videos, and finally, real life. So it's a good idea to start with written text because text on a page or text on a screen is not going anywhere. It's a little simpler, it's a little easier to just take text that is on a page and trans transfer it onto a page as notes. It's a little bit easier if the text is staying there. Then it might be a good idea to move on to videos. Videos are a great way to take notes because you have to listen carefully, but you can also pause and rewind to take down those thoughts. Finally, it's a good idea to practice in real life. So some examples of this might be when a teacher is giving a lecture or a lesson, or if you're doing remote learning, when a teacher is giving a remote lesson. These tend to be a little bit diffi more difficult because you can't pause. You can always ask a question, but you have to listen carefully for those main ideas and supporting details. If you're looking for ways that you can practice this, you can check out our other videos on taking notes with written text, videos, and lectures. Again, my name is Mark McEwen, and I hope this helps you out with your note-taking skills.